my dear students in the previous session we had discussed about the image formation by spherical mirrors and also we have learned about the refraction of light and in the today's session we are going to learn about the spherical lenses and image formation by spherical lenses yes and also we have to study the refraction of light through the rectangular glass slab yes this a b c d is a rectangular glass slab and we are going to study here refraction of light through this glass slab yes here eo is an incident ray falling on the interface between air and glass here is the air and this medium is glass so as the ray is incident on this glass slab it get refracted because of change in medium so this o m is the refracted ray and it moves along a straight line in this glass slab and as it falls on the boundary cd which is the interface between again glass and air again there is a change in the medium here so what happens here because of which this ray which is incident here it will get refracted but in this case it will get refracted away from the normal you can see here air is the rarer medium glass is the denser medium when this is, when this ray of light is incident that is eo is incident on ab interface what happens the light is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium because of which this ray of light is shifted towards the normal in the absence of this second medium the light would have traveled along this dotted line yes as there is change in the medium the ray get refracted along this direction as it falls on interface between again glass and air it is entering from denser medium to again rarer medium yes here as the ray of light is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium it will get refracted away from the normal here it is traveling from rarer to denser because of which it has refracted towards the normal here it is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium so it is shifted away from the normal and this i1 is the angle of incidence ray incident ray and r1 is the angle of refraction and this r1 means it is the angle made by the refracted ray with the normal here yes and here i2 is the angle of incidence of this refracted ray on the interface between again glass and air here and this ray which is emerging out of this glass slab is called as emergent ray this ray what you are seeing here this is called as emergent ray and the angle made by this emergent ray with the normal is called as angle of emergence yes in the absence of this second media the light would have traveled along this path yes but due to presence of this media it has got refracted here again it has got refracted because of change in media and this perpendicular distance between the emergent ray and the incident ray this was incident ray in the absence of the media it would have traveled along this path so this perpendicular distance between the incident ray and the refracted ray that is emergent ray it is called as lateral shift this is how refraction takes place through the rectangular glass slab yes i now we are going to study about the lens what do we mean by lens lens is any transparent material which is bound by two surfaces of which one or both surfaces are spherical here the necessary condition is it should consists of at least one spherical surface for example these are all di different types of lenses this is called as plano convex lens as it is bound by one plane surface and another convex surface which is bulged outwards this is called as plano concave lens as it is bound by one plane surface and another concave surface that means curved inwards you can see in this lens it is bound by both the surfaces which are curved outwards that means bulged outwards it is called as double convex lens or simply convex lens 
you can see here in this lens it is bound by two spherical surfaces which are curved inside it is called as double concave lens or simply concave lens for your syllabus we are going to study the image formation by these two lenses that is concave lens and convex lens yes so what do we mean by convex lens then a lens having two spherical surfaces bulging outwards is called as double convex lens or simply convex lens it is having two spherical surfaces which are curved outwards whenever a parallel beam of light is incident on this type of lens it will get refracted to meet at a point these rays of light after refraction they will meet at a point because of which this lens is also called as converging lens as it converges a parallel beam of light at a single point it is called as converging lens and this lens is thicker in the middle and thin at the edges it is thicker in the middle and thin at the edges why it is called as converging lens because whenever a parallel beam of light is incident on this type of lens the rays of light are refracted to meet at a single point that is these rays of light will converge at a single point because of which this lens is called as converging lens then what do we mean by concave lens then it is a lens having two spherical surfaces curving inwards is called as double concave lens or simply con concave lens this concave lens consists of two spherical surfaces which are curved inwards and we are going to understand about the terms related to this concave and convex lens in the later part now we are going to understand what do we mean by convex lens and concave lens yes whenever a parallel beam of light is incident on this concave lens these rays of light are refracted in different directions means they are spread out they are diverging here you can see here this is a incident beam of light after getting refracted these rays of light are diverging so this lens is also called as diverging lens it is called as diverging lens and this lens is thinner in the middle and thick at the edges it is thinner in the middle and thick at the edges this is about the introduction of this convex and concave lens now let us understand the terminologies of spherical lens in case of spherical mirrors we were studying about the reflection in case of spherical mirrors the reflection was going to take place whereas in case of spherical lens here the phenomenon of refraction takes place and in concave and convex lens they are bounded by two spherical surfaces so these two spherical surfaces forms part of two different spheres you can see here this is convex lens this spherical surface forms a part of one sphere and this spherical surface forms part of another sphere because of which it has two centers and the two centers of these spheres of which the spherical surfaces forms the part is called as center of curvature so we have centers of curvature for lens let us understand these terms here first let's see optic center the central point of the lens is called optic center this point the center of the lens is called as optic center then center of curvature of lens each of the spherical surface forms a part of sphere the center of these spheres is called as center of curvature as we have already learned that these spherical surfaces forms part of two different spheres these spherical surfaces have two centers of curvature c1 and c2 because of presence of two spherical surfaces here yes now principal axis it is an imaginary line joining the two centers of curvature c1 and c2 this is called as principal axis 
Now aperture. Aperture is the effective diameter of the circular outline of the spherical lens. This is the aperture of the lens. This is diameter of the circular outline of this lens which is called as aperture. And principal focus. It is the point at which rays of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction meet at point in case of convex lens and appear to diverge from a point in case of concave lens is called as principal focus. First, let's see the convex lens here. When the parallel beam of light is incident on this convex lens, what happens? Refraction, these rays of light will converge at a point. And this point is called as principal focus. Parallel beam of light can be incident from this side also that is from right to left also. And what happens after refraction these rays of light will converge at this point. Because both sides are transparent. Light can travel from this side to this side and also from this side to this side. When the beam of light converge here it is called one principal focus. If you incident Another beam of light from this part to this part, again the refraction will take place to converge a beam of light at this point. Because of which this concave or convex lens, they have two principal foci, the F1 and F2. They are called as principal foci. Yes, let's see this principal focus in case of concave lens. Here what happens whenever a beam of light is incident, these rays of light get diverged of the refraction. Means they are spread out. Here they are not meeting at any point. But these rays of light appear to diverge from this point. That is F1. This point on the principal axis is called as principal focus of the concave lens. And if you incident the beam of light from this side, we get another principal focus here. So, in concave and convex lens, we have two principal foci. Yes, what do we mean by principal focus then? Whenever a beam of light is incident on concave or convex lens, the beam of light is converged at a point in case of convex lens. Whereas, these light rays appear to diverge from a point in case of concave lens and that point is called as principal focus and for each concave and concave convex lens we have two principal foci. Next is focal length. What is focal length? It is the distance between optical center and the principal focus. Here also you can see the distance between this optical center and principal focus. It is called as focal length. We are measuring here between the optical center and this principal focus which gives focal length. Yes, this is about the terminologies related to spherical lens. Before going to understand the formation of image by spherical lens, let us know some rules here. Rule number one, a ray parallel to the principal axis of the refraction will pass through the second principal focus in case of convex lens or appear to diverge from the first principal focus in case of concave lens. Suppose this is convex lens. Optic center, second principal focus, center of curvature, first principal focus, center of curvature. Now the rule is, a ray which is parallel to the principal axis of the refraction, it will pass through the second principal focus in case of convex lens. This is convex lens. And in case of concave lens, and in case of concave lens, a ray which is parallel to the principal axis, it will diverge in the direction such that it is directed towards the first principal focus. After refraction through the lens, this parallel ray of light, which is parallel to the principal axis, it gets diverged. But it is directed towards the first principal focus in case of concave lens. You can see here, this diverged ray is directed towards the first principal focus. In this way, the parallel ray of light will get refracted in convex and concave lens. Let's see the rule number 2 here. A ray passing through the principal focus of a convex lens or a ray which is directed towards the principal focus of a concave lens of refraction will emerge parallel to the 
principal axis. See here, this is convex lens, a ray which is pass, passing through the principal focus after refraction through the lens, it will emerge parallel to the principal axis in case of convex lens. In case of concave lens, a of light which is directed towards the principal focus. See here, this is the ray which is directed towards the principal focus. After refraction, this ray will emerge parallel to the principal focus. This is the incident ray which is directed towards the principal focus of this lens. And after refraction, it will emerge parallel to the principal axis. This is rule number 2. And rule number 3 says that a ray passing through the optic center of a concave lens or convex lens will go undeviated. This is convex lens. This is concave lens. This rule states that a ray of light which is passing through the optic center, optical center, it will go undeviated after refraction. After passing through this optical center, this ray, ray will go undeviated which is passing through the optical center. This is the rule number 3 and it is applicable for both convex and concave lens. These are some rules for the refraction of light through the spherical lens. Now let's see how the images are formed by refraction through the convex lens. Yes, first let us consider the position of the object at infinity. When the object is placed at infinity, then we assume that the parallel rays are coming from it. So these are the parallel rays which are incident on the convex lens here. And we know that the rays which are parallel to the principal axis of the refraction, they will meet at principal focus. That is second principal focus. And these rays are meeting here. This is the position at which the image is formed. So the image is formed at F2. Whenever the parallel rays are falling on this convex lens. And how is this image? It is point sized. It is highly diminished. You can see here. This is point sized image formed. And it is highly diminished. What is the nature of the image? As it is formed by the meeting of the reflected refracted rays here. The rays are refracted here. And the point at which these refracted rays are meeting. The real image is formed. Actual meeting of the refracted rays. And we know that real images are inverted. So let's write the position. Position of the image is. It is formed at F2. And what is the size of the image formed? It is point sized. Highly diminished. And what is the nature of the image? The real and inverted image is formed. Because these refracted rays are meeting at this point. So real and inverted image is formed here. Now let's see the case when the object is placed beyond 2F1. This is 2F1. Here the object is placed beyond 2F1. Now we know that for the image formation we need to consider at least two rays. This is one parallel ray which is parallel to the principal axis. We know that of the refraction, it will pass through the second principal focus. This parallel ray of light will pass through the second principal focus. That is F2. And we are considering one more ray here. This, that is ray passing through the optical center. And we know that that ray which is pass, passing through the optical center, it will go undeviated. It will not change its direction. This is how this will move undeviated. Now, this is the point at which these two refracted rays are meeting. And here is the image formed. You can see this is the image formed where the two rays are meeting. How is this image? It is smaller than that of the object. So, it is diminished. And where is this image formed? It is formed between F2 and 2F2. This is 2F2. So, the position of the image is between F2 and 2F2. This point is F2 and this point is 2F2. It is formed in between these two, F2 and 2F2. Now, what is the nature of the image? It is real because 
the rays are actually meeting here and also it is inverted now position of the image it is between f2 and 2f2 and size it is diminished what about what about the nature of the image it is real and inverted yes now let's see when the object is placed at 2f1 this is 2f1 again we are considering here two rays one is the parallel ray of light falling on the lens after refraction this will pass through the principal focus that is second principal focus another ray which is passing through the optical center it will go undeviated and this is where the two rays are meeting here here is the image form this is the image where, where is the position of the image it is formed at f2 when the object is placed at 2 f1 it is formed at 2 f2 not f2 2 f2 the position of the image is 2 f2 Re recall that in case of spherical mirrors when the object was placed at c the image was formed at c yes here also we are seeing that when the object is placed exactly at 2 f1 we are getting the image at 2 f2 and how is this image it is realigned inverted and also it has the same size as that of the object so position at 2 f2 and what is the size of the image it is same as that of object and what is the nature of the image you can see here it is real and inverted yes this is about the formation of image when the object is exactly placed at 2f1. Now let's see when the object is placed between f1 and 2f1. This is f1, this is 2f1. Here the object is placed between f1 and 2f1. We are considering here, we are considering here a parallel ray of light falling on the lens. After reflect refraction, it will pass through the second principal focus. One more ray here that is passing through the optical center of the convex lens. It will go undeviated. So this is the point at which these two rays are meeting. So the image is formed here. Where is the image formed here? This is the point at which these two rays are meeting. Here is the image formed. And where is the position of the image? It is beyond 2F2. This is 2F2. This image is formed beyond this. So, the position of the image formed is beyond 2F2. And how is the size of the image? It is larger when compared to the object. So, it is enlarged. The size of the object is less. Means, the image formed is of larger size when compared to the object. What is the size of the image here? It is larger when compared to the object. So, it is enlarged. Nature of the image. This is formed by the actual meeting of the refracted rays. So, it is real and also we can see here the inverted image is formed. So, the nature is real and inverted. Now, the next case is when the object is placed at focus F1. This is the focus F1. Consider here one of the Consider here one ray is parallel which is incident on the convex lens. After refraction it will pass through the second principal focus. One more ray here that is passing through the optical center. We know that it will go undeviated. So how are these two rays? Are they meeting here? No. These are parallel rays. And we assume that these parallel rays are going to meet at infinity. So, where is the image formed then? At infinity. And how is the nature of the image? It will be real and inverted. Let us assume that they are going to meet here. Actually, they are going to meet at infinity. Let us assume. If they are going to meet here, then the image formed will be like this. How is this image? It is real and inverted. And it is highly enlarged when compared to that of object. So, what is the size of the image formed? It will be highly enlarged. 
and what is the nature of the image it will be real and inverted because because we are going to assume that they are going to meet at infinity so the real and inverted image is formed position of the image is at infinity and size of the image is it is highly enlarged and nature of the image it is real and inverted you can observe here when the object was placed at infinity the image was formed at principal focus now when the object is placed at principal focus the image is formed at infinity yes now let us see the last case here when the object is between the focus f1 and optic center this is focus f1 and this is optic center when this object is placed between focus f1 and optic center o we have to consider here two rays this is a parallel ray of light falling on the convex lens after refraction it will pass through the second principal focus again one more ray here it is passing through the optic center and we know that the ray of light passing through the optic center it will go undeviated means it is not going to change its direction how these rays are looking they are diverging rays these two are diverging rays means they are not going to meet at any point so how do we find the position of the image then you can see here these two rays appear to diverge from this point they are appearing as if they are going to meet here these two rays actually they are not meeting here but they appear to meet at this point because of which we will say the image is formed here which is virtual image because actually the rays are not meeting they are appearing to meet here they appear to meet here so we call it as virtual image it is virtual image how is this image what is the size of this image it is enlarged when compared to the object and what is the nature of the image it is virtual and erect the object is also like this and the image is also like this the object is also like this and the image is also like this means they are upright so we say that it is formed virtual and erect what is the position of the image formed here it is formed on the same side of the lens yes position same side of the object the object is also here and the image formed is also here only so it is formed on the same side of the object and lens what is the size it is enlarged what is the nature of the image it is virtual and erect this is about the formation of image by convex lens through refraction this is the summary of the nature position and relative size of the image formed by convex lens see here when the object was placed at infinity the position of the image is f2 as we move the size as we move the object nearer to the lens the image is formed away from the lens you can see here when the object was placed beyond 2f1 the image is formed between f2 and 2f2 and here when we move the object at 2f1 exactly then the image formed is at 2f2 and here you can see when the object is placed at focus f1 the image is formed at infinity when the object was placed at infinity the image was formed at f2 when the object is placed at focus f1 the image is formed at infinity and when the object is placed very nearer to the lens that is between focus f1 and optical center then the image formed will be on the same side as that of a lens and object and it is highly and it is enlarged here also the relative size of the image is increasing here as we are moving the object towards the lens again when it is placed exactly at focus f1 the image is formed at infinity and we say that the relative size of the image will be highly enlarged and when it is placed between focus f1 and optical center then the relative size of the image is again enlarged so in all these cases we are getting the real and inverted images and when the object is placed between f1 and optical center we are getting the virtual and erect image this is about the image formation by refraction through convex lens
Now we are going to understand how the images are formed by refraction through concave lens here. First, let us consider the case when the object is at infinity. When the object is placed at infinity means it is placed at very very large distance so that the rays coming from it will be parallel to the principal axis. These are the rays parallel to the principal axis. Yes. And we know that in case of concave lens, after refraction, these rays of light will get diverged. This is passing through the optic center. So, it is going undeviated. See here, these two parallel rays, they are getting diverged after refraction. And it appears that they are diverging from this point. This dotted line indicates that they are going to, this dotted line indicates that these rays are appearing to meeting at F1. Actually, they are not meeting here, but they appear to meet at this point. It seems like they are going to diverge from this point. So, here is the image formed. What is the position of the image formed? It is formed at F1. That is first principal focus. And how is this image? It is point sized and highly diminished. And what is the nature of the image? It will be virtual and erect because these rays are not actually meeting. They appear to meet at this point. So, we say that virtual image is formed and virtual images are erect. So, position of the image formed is, it is at first principal focus. And size of the image is, it is point sized, highly diminished. The nature of the image, it is virtual and erect. Yes, now we consider the second case where the object is placed anywhere between optical center and infinity. This is optical center. We can take the position of the object between this optical center and infin infinity. Means it can be placed anywhere here. So, let us see if the object is placed here. For image formation, we are going to consider two rays. This is the parallel ray of light. This is parallel ray of light that is which is parallel to the principal axis. We know that after refraction through concave lens, it will be diverged. Now, we are going to consider another ray here, which is passing through the optical center and it will go undeviated. You can see here, these two rays are diverging, which means they are not going to meet here anywhere. Diverging rays are not going to meet. They appear to meet as if at this point. Yes or not? Actually, they are not meeting, but they appear to meet at this point. Here is the image formed and this image is virtual. Where is the image formed? Between the focus F1 and optical center O. This is the image formed here. See, in both the cases, these rays are diverging. They are not going to meet at any point. So, what we consider is they appear as if they are going to meet at this point. You can see here, these rays appear as if they are diverging from this point. As if they are going to meet here. So, here is the position of the image form. Here also, these two rays are diverging rays. They are not going to meet anywhere. So, but here, they appear to meet at this point. This is the point where the image is formed. And what is the nature of the image? It is virtual and erect. What is the size of the image formed? It is diminished. Position of the image is, it is formed between F1 and between F1 and O. Size, it is diminished. And nature, it is virtual and erect. This is about the formation of image, images by refraction through concave lens. This is the summary of the nature, position and relative size of the image formed by concave lens. In both the cases, the nature of the image is virtual and erect. And there are two cases which we have studied. When the object is placed at infinity, then the position of the image will be at F1. That is focus F1. And when the object is placed anywhere between infinity and optical center O, then the image is formed between focus F1 and optical center O. And here the diminished image is obtained in case of convex lens that is concave lens. And here 
the diminished image is formed in case of concave lens. Yes. Now let's see the sign convention for spherical lenses. Even for spherical lenses, we use we use the same sign convention as that of spherical mirrors. We have seen in spherical mirrors that the distances which are measured on left side of the pole they were taken as negative, and the distances measured on right side of the pole they are taken as positive. Here also. the measurement of the distances to the right side of the optical center it is taken as positive and the measurement of the distances taken along the left side of the optical center they are taken as negative and when it comes to height when the object and when it comes to height when the image is formed above the principal axis then we take it as positive if the image is formed below the principal axis we take it as negative so all the rules are similar as that of spherical mirrors only the difference is here the distances are me measured from the optical center of the lens in case of spherical mirrors we were measuring the distance from the pole but here we are but here we are measuring the distances from the optical center of the lens and according to the sign convention the focal length of the convex lens is positive and that of concave lens is negative let's see in case of convex lens this is convex lens where is the principal focus of the convex lens let's see here when a parallel beam of light is incident on this lens what happens these rays will meet at the point f2 this is the principal focus so the focal length which is the distance between optical center and f2 it is taken on the right side of this lens so it is taken as positive in case of convex lens what happens in case of concave lens where is the principal focus in case of concave lens and remember we are taking here the rays of light coming from only left side because it is according to the sign convention we always place the object on left side of the lens here so we are considering only the rays coming from left side so here also whenever a beam of light is incident these rays of light will get diverged so they appear to meet at this point so the principal focus is on left side of the lens i f is the distance between the optic center o and the principal focus f i this distance is measured along left side of the lens so focal length is negative in case of con concave lens so always remember when the focal length is given positive then it is convex lens when focal length is negative it is concave lens understood if f is positive then it is convex lens if f is negative then it is concave lens this is about the sign convention for spherical lenses as we had mirror formula we also have lens formula which gives the relation between the object distance image distance and focal length it is given by 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u where f is the focal length v is the image distance and u is the object distance and we have to be careful while applying the signs for these measurements yes this is the lens formula now as we have seen the magnification in case of mirrors here also we are going to learn magnification of lens lens it is the extent to which the image is magnified with respect to the object it is the extent to which image is magnified with respect to the object and it is given by m is equal to height of the image that is h dash by height of the object h dash is the height of the image h is the height of the object and this magnification is also related to the image and object distance so it is v upon u 
so in order to calculate the magnification of lens we have to use these two formulae yes now the last part of this chapter is power of lens what do we mean by power it is the measure of convergence or divergence of a lens it is the ability of a lens to converge or diverge the beam of light falling on it power of lens is depending on the focal length if the focal length of the lens is shorter then there is a more degree of divergence or convergence let's see if we have taken convex lens of convex lens of shorter focal length if the convex lens has shorter focal length then it will bend the rays of light through large angles it will bend the rays of light through large angles it means that it will focus the beam of light at point nearer to the optical center yes the, if this is a convex lens yes if it is having shorter wavelength sorry if it is having shorter focal length what happens it will bend the rays of light with larger angles like this and this focused beam of light is formed nearer to the optical center for example if the lens has longer focal length then it will bend the rays of light with shorter angles like this so this focused beam of light is formed away from the optical center in this way the power of convergence it depends on the focal length if we have taken the lens of shorter focal length it will bend the rays with larger angles and this focuses the beam of light at a shorter distance from the optical from the optical center if it is of larger focal length what happens it will bend the rays to a shorter angles so that the focused beam of light is away from the optical center and it is same in case of concave lens also suppose this is con concave lens if this lens is having shorter focal length then what happens it will diverge the rays of light through large angles this angle will be very large the deviation will be very large if it is having longer focal length then it will deviate means it will diverge the rays of light to a smaller angles in this way this power of lens is depending on the focal length so so we say that power of lens is the reciprocal of focal length power of lens is given by reciprocal of focal length the shorter the focal length foc focal length the more is the power of the lens the shorter the focal length the more is the power of the lens the longer the fo focal length then the less is the power of the lens and if focal length is having negative sign then power of the lens is also having the negative sign if focal length is having positive sign then power of the lens is also having positive sign in case of convex lens f is positive in case of convex lens and f is negative in case of concave lens because of which if p is positive then it shows that it is convex lens if p is negative then it shows that it is concave lens and the unit of this power of lens is diopter diopter is the unit of power of lens and to define one diopter one diopter is the power of lens of focal length 1 meter if i say the power of the lens is one diopter then it means it is the power of lens of focal length 1 meter this is how we will find out the power of lens this is all about the chapter light reflection and refraction we are going to solve some numericals here let's solve the numerical here an object 5 cm in length is held 25 cm away from the converging lens of focal length 10 cm draw the ray diagram and find the position size and the nature of the image formed we have to find out the 
position nature and size of the image form first let us write what are the given quantities here they have given object height an object 5 cm in length means it is the height of the object yes height of the object h is equal to 5 cm as object is placed above the principal axis we will take it as positive only and it is held 25 cm away from the converging lens so it is placed at left side of the optical center so it will be negative inside the distance of the object minus 25 cm and focal length is 10 cm and we know that focal length for convex lens is positive now we have to find the image formation where it is formed we have to find out the distance of the image formed and also its nature and size yes we know that from the lens formula we have 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u so we should know the v here so 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon f plus 1 upon u what is v here it is the image distance is equal to 1 upon n plus 1 upon minus 25 let's write here only so 1 upon v is equal to 1 upon 10 minus 1 upon 25 it will be 55 minus 2 that is 3 by 50 so 1 by v is equal to 3 by 50 this comes out to be 16.66 this is the image distance the positive sign indicates that image is formed opposite to the lens means it is formed on right side of the lens now we have to calculate the height of this image formed and we know that from the magnification and we know that magnification is given by the ratio of image distance by object distance it will be 16.66 by minus 25 so it will be approximately minus 0 0.66 from this we can calculate the height of the image formed right now we know the distance of the image but we don't know the height of the image formed so height of the image can be related as h into m we know height of the object which is 5 cm and magnification it is also we have calculated here it is minus 0 0.66 so it will be approximately minus 3.3 cm this negative sign indicates that the image is formed inverted it is formed below the principal axis so it is obtained in the negative sign so let us draw the ray diagram for this image formation the given lens is the given lens is converging lens that is convex lens this is the optic center optical center this is the first principal second principal focus this is center of curvature this is first principal focus this is center of curvature now they have given the focal length is 10 centimeter and also they have mentioned the object is placed at a distance of 25 centimeter from the optical center now for the image formation we have to consider two rays here one is the parallel ray after refraction it will pass through the second principal focus and one more ray we shall consider the ray passing through the optical center after refraction it will move undeviated it will not change its direction so this is the point at which these two rays are meeting here is the image formed the position of the image is it is between f2 and 2f2 and we have also calculated where it is formed it is formed at a distance of 16.66 cm from the optical center yes let us write the solution for this question here what is the position let us write the answer for this question now what is the position of the image 
it is formed at 16.66 cm on opposite side of the lens and what is the size of the image we have calculated it h dash it is 3.3 cm and this negative sign indicates it is formed below the principal axis means it is inverted and what is the nature of the image it is real and inverted as it is formed below the principal axis it is inverted and also it is formed by actual meeting of the refracted rays so it is real this is how we will find out the position size and nature of the image and we can also indicate these quantities in the ray diagram also yes this is placed at 25 cm from the lens and the image is formed at 16.66 cm from the optical center 16.66 cm and these are the two rays coming from the object these are the refracted ray and what is the height of this image formed it is 3.3 cm and this is 5 cm in height this is how we will draw the ray diagram for the numeric this is about the chapter light reflection and refraction <laughs>